You see, you see, you see, we got Jimmy Iron. It doesn't get much worse than this. Comes up top, gets it. James on the drive. He showed his play again, player. man. That's. Uh... Like I said before, I said this in the video when I, when I reacted to it. Like, when you drop to the paint with the game on the line, more times than not, the refs are not going to call it. They only call this type of foul like 5% of the time, especially when the game is on the line. I don't know why they do it, but this is that's how they are. They have a tendency not to call this foul. When your game's on the line, you're driving to the rim, they're not going to call anything. You get hit, get hit on the hit, hit on your head, the back of your neck, on your ear, they ain't going to call it. I don't know why, but this is how it is. That's, uh, that's a foul. Here it is again in slow motion. Tie game with three seconds left on the clock. Game on the line. This being the potential and game. And he's driving to the rim. They're not going to call it. Shot. Like I said, they're not going to call it. And there no call. is the obvious foul. And there's the no call. Yeah, because it, that's what they do. They don't call fouls like that. There's LeBron James. They've been doing that for years. Episode in utter disbelief of the no call. This split second lapse by the refs cost the Lakers this game. It's like you got to tell the refs, oh yeah, I'm driving to the rim for the game winner. Then they'll call it. But if you don't tell them that, they're not going to call it. And not only was the foul clear as Conor Bradley Bill did that one year back when Westbrook was on the, um, we, we was on the Wizards. They said, we're going to give the ball to Bradley Bill. He's going to drive to the rim. If it was a foul, you better call it. Then he drove to the rim and they called it. Like, yeah. they only call that like 5% of the time. The other 95% of the time, they're going to the let stuff like this go. They're going to let it go right like that. It. This is egregious. But missed calls and even bad calls for that matter. Because you got to understand not... that these refs, they want to go home too. They ain't trying to go to overtime. They want to go home too. Nothing new to the NBA. In fact, NBA refs have always been spotty. This was bad. But that, that's my point. That's my point. as bad as some missed calls we've seen before. We stepped out. He stepped way out. Today's video is brought to you by... <laughs> Boo. First order today. They have the six free throws the next half. Did you he guys just him? see that? He just this is him? Vince Carter, former NBA great. This is Mo Peterson. He would go on to have 81 points put right on his head two weeks after this game. And in the middle of a live broadcast in front of 17,000 people, Vince Carter slapped Mo Pete. It wasn't Yo, harder you won't let in that slide fact, in front of how many people he said? 20,000? Pete, it wasn't harder in 17,000 people. It's like Draymond Green and Jordan Poole all over again. Oh, Vince Jordan Poole didn't do anything because it was practice. But if you imagine if it was in the game, he would have struck back for Carter surely. Slapped. Baddies would have been in the stands. Mo Pete. <laughs> it wasn't harder or anything. In fact, Vince and Mo were former teammates. They were just messing around. But the ref didn't see Vince do this. What they did see, however, was this and as a result it's always of this the second person playful act mo peterson was immediately thrown out of this ball game yeah it was always the second person that's how the nba is someone can hit you that's not gonna see see anything they're gonna be looking straight at you someone hit you they ain't gonna call anything but you're gonna wait for you to hit back to eject you and i mean this is taylor made right now and now what do we have is peterson what do we have he just got tired yes he did he would not stop talking to steve jabby and Noah's taking off his jersey. Oh, they were just fooling around there. Wow. Yep. I mean, this ref didn't even hesitate. And as any player would be, Mo was pissed. And if that wasn't insulting enough, Mo had to watch from the locker room as Vince Carter went on to hit the game winning buzzer beater later on that same game. This oh, it's the first game back in Toronto. It's absolutely appalling. Oh! One of the worst no calls turned into a tragically bad call in a matter of seconds. But this Crazy. is just one of many, many bad no calls we've seen in recent NBA history. The no call they is the right truly play for the one Pelicans? of the most frustrating things to witness as a sports fan. If you ever want to see a grown adult spiral into an incoherent rage in absolutely no time at all, just watch him as his favorite team gets stiffed out of a call by a ref. It can be frustrating because we all see it, the players see it, and yet the guy whose job it is to see it can't. Like the no call on Devin Booker in game four of the 2021 NBA Finals. Clearly a hard foul and a foul that could have changed the trajectory of this series being that it would have been Booker's sixth and final foul of the game. But it was never called. Or this notorious play back in 2019 when the Rockets were facing the Warriors. Game is all tied up, hardly any time left on the clock. The Rockets play great defense and strip Kevin Durant of the ball. KD was the last person to touch it, and it's going out of bounds. This could be what the Rockets need to turn this game in their favor. 
and then KD runs a half marathon on the baseline. It touches the ball. The rest he touches comes. the ball. The ball's not out of bounds yet, but KD's out of bounds. He still, so he touches the ball. Conjure up, up the audacity. And now I think about it, that's why the rest didn't call it. The ball wasn't out of bounds yet. It's just KD was out of bounds. But then the part didn't see KD out of bounds. His long as 20, size 20. I could I could have tell if you shot a two point or three pointer, but 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 when he's out of bounds, y'all can't see it. Whoop de doo! Need to ignore the seventy two steps he just took out of bounds, and then the ball gets swung around to Curry, who hits the dagger. Out, out, absolutely he's out. out. Wow! How the world do you I mean, miss how that? do you miss that? that <laughs> This really sucks. And for decades, NBA fans around the globe have had to sit idly by as their favorite team gets railed by NBA refs time and time again. It's a story as old as time itself. Like this play back in 2013, where Kevin Love attempts Kevin to put Love. up a potentially oh, game play for the shot, Timberwolves. but clearly gets fouled by Sean Marion. Let me see that. And the Could barely strip LeBron the same way. On that Christmas Day game back in like I think 2019, it was like 80s first season with the Lakers. Barely stripped them perfectly. Potentially game one. Winning shot, I ain't see anything. Clearly gets fouled I ain't by see Sean anything. Marion and doesn't get the call. I ain't and it's see not anything. like the refs just didn't see it. They're both looking right at it. I ain't seen nothing like he just lost the ball. The refs just people just lose the ball like this sometimes. It. I don't know. It's like a weird angle or something it. for them. They're both looking. Look, the dude just lost the ball. That dude lost. He lost the ball. You can't throw that stuff in the side. Look, he lost the ball. His head, bro. His hands not even on him. And the ball, look at the ball, the ball is right here, his hands is right. He just lost the ball. Didn't get the call. And it's not he like the refs just, just the didn't see it. They're he lost the ball. Looking right he lost the ball. In real time. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think your arm does this when you're shooting a jump shot. Unless, of course, you were fouled. But the call was missed, and the Timberwolves lost this game. Or what about that time in 2017 with an ascending Giannis Antetokounmpo and a game-winning dunk that should have never even happened? Are your kids in grade six? Jimmy, I was about women are. Getting in regulation. And Antetokounmpo, checked by Houston. He'll drive. He scores. Oh, my goodness. Oh, not this one. Did you see it? Hmm. Westbrook, Here's too, was on OKC. Another angle of it. They probably didn't call it because it had a random nobody draw on them. That's probably why they didn't call it. Right there. Yep. Anna stepped out of bounds on this drive, and the refs never called He stepped out of bounds and twice. I don't know how, because the ref is looking right at it. This guy noticed. He's looking at Yana's face, not the, not his feet. That's crazy. How are you looking at someone? How are you on a baseline ref, and you're not looking at someone's feet? He's looking at his face. Right That's away. crazy. Hey, so did the dude got caught staring at Giannis' face on a baseline. Instead of looking at his feet. That's what you're supposed to look at, his feet. Because the ref is looking right at it. It's crazy. This guy noticed the out-of-bounds right away. So did this guy. I thought it was, it was like, dude, Man. that's out the league, Gardner. But. So did she. And so did this guy standing 30 feet away. But somehow, this ref did not. But not to worry, my friends. It gets worse. Like back in 2002, when the Hornets faced off against the Magic in the first round of the playoffs. The game is all tied up with only 0.7 seconds the left on the clock. The Hornets are inbounding the ball, and they're going to need a miracle to pull off a win here without going into overtime. Davis at the buzzer. Baron Davis? And that's exactly what happened. A 27-foot dagger from Baron Davis that's over good. two that's defenders good. to win the game and take a 2-1 lead in the series. Well... Not really, because according to this ref, Baron Davis didn't get the shot off in time. Catch, Davis. fire. The That's good. Oh, yes. No, it's waved off. Bernie says no, it will not count. <laughs> it he cost him a playoff game. Oh, it so cost him a playoff game. Goodness. I mean. I'm pretty sure a regular he did. season game is one thing, but a playoff game is another. <laughs> but I could be wrong, so let's take another look at this. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Unless I don't know how a shot clock works, I'm about 1,000% positive he got that shot off in time. In fact, the call was so bad that bro actually- He probably wanted to be a switch, not a bank shot. That's probably why. He baffled himself. He is perplexed. Doesn't even know why he made the call in the first place. And so he seeks counsel with one of the other refs and is met with absolutely no- Oh yeah, back in the day, they didn't have three refs. They just had two. I think they put three refs back in like the 20 teens. That's when they decided they have three left, three refs instead of two. Or at all. 
This is one of the most horrendous calls from a ref I've ever seen. And what would have been just the 21st game-winning buzzer beater in NBA playoff history never even counted. But to find a real doozy of a call, a real head scratch, this year, Bunny... Jimmy Harris was about fiber? Sure. That'll really get your blood boiling. We have to Joey. go back to June 6, 2005, to witness one of the most blatant abuse of a whistle I think I've ever seen in my life. It's the playoffs. The Pistons are facing the Heat in a crucial Game 7 of the Rick Eastern Hamilton. Conference Finals. Winner goes to the NBA Finals. Loser goes home. This game was Young. neck and neck the entire way. Eight lead changes in the second half alone. And after 47 minutes of action, the Pistons creep out to a three-point lead. At this point, every single decision is critical. Just one mistake could earn you a one-way ticket back home for four months. With 46 seconds left in the fourth quarter, the Pistons gain possession after a jump ball. They run a play for Tayshawn Prince on the wing who blows right past Yo, Shaq. See? Yeah, born in 20 teens and 20 20. I don't know nothing about this. Get stripped in the process. Sack. Miami's going the other way. You got stripped if by Shaq. Shaq, that's crazy. They can cap Imagine getting a strip Shaq. <laughs> my Shaq. Shaq got a strip steal. This steal, this could be a season-altering mistake by the Pistons. Damon Jones travel. is leaking, and he's got an opportunity at a oh, fast almost. break. I was almost Eddie Jones kicks it up to Damon. This is Miami's window to close the lead to just one point. But it's a bad pass. Eddie put just a little too much on the ball, so now Damon is chasing. He manages to snag the ball before it goes out. But now he's trapped on the sideline with nowhere to go. One of the best perimeter defenders in the game wearing him like a cheap suit and 17 seconds left left on the clock. Miami's opportunity may have just came and went in the blink of an eye. But do you see this ref right here? This is Joey Crawford. Joey was an NBA official for 40 years. And throughout his 40 year oh, refing right. career- That's the dude that went like this. No, always went like that every time he blew a whistle. That's right. He made some pretty questionable calls. Like that time he threw Tim Duncan out of a game We're for back. laughing. Or when he gave bench. Sasha Pavlovich a technical foul for getting elbowed in the face. Or what about the time he ejected Don Nelson 90 seconds into a game? Here he is getting Yo, in the way got of... <laughs> JJ Redick in the middle of a fast like break, would do. falling down, and then calling a shooting foul while on his ass looking in the opposite direction. <laughs> Joey, and then called... <laughs> you hit me, so it's a foul. You hit the ref, so it's a foul. Calling a shooting foul while on his ass looking in the opposite direction. Joey had his moments, and you're about to see the worst one. Because after attack. Damon Jones chases down this pass, this happens. Jones able to race it down. <laughs> he pushed him! He pushed him! Contact <laughs> made. Unaware of the six foot three inch, 200 pound grown man standing 10 feet in front of him, Joey Crawford absolutely <laughs> obliterates Damon Jones and sends him out of bounds. And because something like he this. He got tackled by a ref. <laughs> he got tackled by a ref and lost the ball. He said, pissed his ball. But the ref tackled me. The ref tackled me out of bounds. Whatever happens, there's no real protocol Ooh. here. Do you just How give the I ball to the before? heat and let them inbound it? Do you reset the <laughs> shot clock? Is it a jump ball? No. It's, it's a, a foul ball. on Chauncey Billups. It's a Pistons ball. It's the, I thought you were going to get the ball to the Pistons. <laughs> he said, I'm not losing out on my I made a bet on this game. I'm not losing my money. <laughs> Tackle the player. It's going to go to the line here for two free throws. Let's take a look. The outlet pass a little bit too far ahead of Jones. He does a nice job of recovering and a little bump. A foul on Billups and Damon Jones. Billups is in shock. He can't believe the call, and rightfully so. The man played incredible defense and stopped a potentially game-altering fast break that could have ended their season and was rewarded with a foul call for something he didn't even do. The fact that no one even batted an eye at this call and it wasn't overturned is baffling. This foul call was horrific, and it nearly cost the Pistons a trip to the NBA Finals. But fortunately for the Pistons and Joey Crawford's pristine reputation, Detroit still went on to win this game. But that doesn't change the fact that out had of the countless was, bad man. calls and no calls throughout NBA history, this one might just be the worst. Who got tackled by a rat? Hope you all enjoy. <laughs> and as always, until next time.